let me quickly introduce myself to get this webinar started. Um, my name is Vladislav and I am pre-sales engineer here at Starwind. And now back to today's topic. As it was previously announced, today we're going to discuss the RDMA technology, find out how it works and what's required for the configuration of RDMA within your infrastructure and how it's tested and possible um, roadblocks in the process of implementation. Please also note that this webinar is being recorded and the recorded video will be uploaded to our website and to our YouTube channel. I would also, we, I would also be very thankful for any of your rating votes and the end of the broadcast. So, all right, guys, it seems that we're going good and move on. And for starters, I would like to address your attention to a quick overview of today's topics, uh, where we'll quickly go th uh, through the technology behind RDMA. We'll also determine the differences between the most common RDMA implementations down to our test lab for benchmarking its performance benefits. And in conclusion, I'm planning to answer all of your questions. So, Remote Direct Memory Access, or RDMA, is a technology that allows computers in the network to exchange data stored in the RAM memory without involving the CPU, cache, or operating system on both of the participants. RDMA improves the throughput and the performance because it decreases the resources utilization. In addition, RDMA also facilitates a faster data transfer rate and low latency networking. Mostly you can find RDMA in high performance computing clusters, massive data center networks, cloud computing, medical appliances, storage, backup systems, and financial services where the low latency, high bandwidth, and a small CPU foot footprint are critical. And uh, there are several well-known RDMA implementations. Uh, you may know them, it's InfiniBand, RDMA over converged Ethernet, also well-known as Rocky, and Ethernet wide area RDMA protocol, also known as IWAR. So how does RDMA really work? In order to find out, let's compare RDMA with a regular network interconnection. As you can see on the regular network interconnection has a large sequence of copy operations. All of these operations require additional resources and increase data transfer latency. In return, the lower diagram demonstrates data movement with less transitions by implementing a transport protocol in the network interface card hardware. So RDMA makes it possible to read data directly from the main memory of one host and write that data directly to the main memory of the other. When we ask the question about the advantages and disadvantages of RDMA, uh, they're not clear from the start because it seems really complex. So let's break it down and let's start with the advantages. So first it's zero copy. So applications can perform data transfer without involving the network software stack and data is being sent or received direct, directly between the buffers, eliminating the need to copy this data between the various network layers. Uh, next one, it's the kernel bypass. So applications can perform data transfers directly between user spaces without the need to perform the connect switches. Uh, as well as the uh, less CPU involvement, applications can access remote memory without consuming any compute resources of the remote machine. And last one, it's the message-based transactions. The data is handled as dec discrete messages instead of a stream, which eliminates the need of the application to separate the stream into different messages or transactions. The existing disadvantages include, you know, actually there is a single disadvantage of the RDMA technology. It's called a one-side communication. In other words, the target node is not notified of the completion of the request. And, and the common way of notification is uh, changing the memory byte when the data has been delivered, but it requires to, the target to pull this byte. 
every time. So not only does this pooling consume CPU cycles, it also linearly increases the memory footprint and the latency between other nodes, which limits the use of RDMA. And keeping in mind this uh, disadvantage, all the RDMA-enabled vendors designed mechanisms to eliminate this disadvantage, disadvantage and ensure that the data has been delivered without limiting the utilization of RDMA. Now, uh, with a basic understanding of the RDMA technology, we can move on and talk about uh, the most popular implementations of RDMA. And they are, as I mentioned previously, the three protocols. It's uh, RDMA over converged Ethernet, InfiniBand, and iWare protocols. And let's go over a general overview of them. And let's start with InfiniBand. So InfiniBand is a network communications protocol that offers a switch-based fabric of point-to-point uh, -point bidirectional serial links uh, between node CPUs, as well as uh, input-output hosts, such as the disks or storage. So every link has exactly one device connected on each end, such uh, characteristics control the trans transmission, sending and receiving on each end. And InfiniBand was developed by InfiniBand Trade Association. I, I think you may know this. And uh, it's a part of the InfiniBand industry standard, a channel-based switched fabric architecture for the server and storage connectivity. So uh, initially, it was designed to use RDMA as its method of transferring data. It's, um, it natively supports server virtualization, overlay networks, and software-defined networks. Uh, it takes an application-centric approach to messaging as well as finding the path of least uh, resistance to deliver data from one point to another. Uh, this differs from um, traditional network protocols, which use a more network-centric method of communication. Uh, next, it's um, RDMA over converged Ethernet or Rocky. Uh, Rocky is a network protocol that enables uh, RDMA to operate on ordinary Ethernet layer 2 and 3 networks and is defined within the overarching um, InfiniBand architecture specification. It was developed by as well by InfiniBand Trade Association and there are currently two versions of Rocky. Rocky version 1 is an Ethernet link protocol uh, which allows communication between any two hosts in the same Ethernet broadcast domain, uh, limiting the routing of the packets. And Rocky version 2 is an Internet layer protocol, which means that its uh, packets can be routed. And Rocky version 2 exists on top of either the UDP IPv4 or the UDP IPv6 protocol. And both Rocky versions have the same Ether type and following uh, frame length limits of the Ethernet protocol are applicable. It's uh, 1,500 bytes for the regular Ethernet frame and 9,000 bytes for the Jumbo frame. Although the Rocky protocol benefits um, from the characteristics of a converged Ethernet network, but as well it could be used uh, on the traditional or a non-converged Ethernet network. And last one of three, it's uh, Ethernet Internet Wide Area RDMA Protocol, or the so-called IWAR. It's a computer networking protocol uh, that implements RDMA for um, efficient data transfer over internet protocol networks. So IWARP uses a mix of layers, including direct data placement protocol, a separate RDMA protocol uh, that was designed for transferring the data, and a few tweaks to prevent the packets lost. And all of these layers are used for delivering RDMA over uh, RDMA services over the TCP IP. Uh, with such complex architecture, um, IWARP is actually the slowest RDMA offering, and in addition to that, only a single vendor, it's called Chelsea, uh, currently supports iWARP in their products. And the main reason for that is uh, because the technology has not been well adopted by the market. 
Intel is well supported, iWarp in its uh, 10 gigabit networks from the beginning of 2009, but has discontinued its support in all of its newer NICs since then. And in terms of differences, obviously iWarp, uh, it's completely different from Rocky and InfiniBand by design and the architecture. And since it's not in common use at the present, uh, and supports only by a single vendor, I will concentrate on the differences between InfiniBand and Rocky. So first of all, um, the difference is it's the Rocky defines how to perform uh, RDMA over Ethernet, while the InfiniBand architecture specification defines how to perform RDMA over an InfiniBand network. And the technical differences uh, between Rocky and InfiniBand protocols are um, InfiniBand uses link level flow control. It's a credit based algorithm that guarantees looseless communication and the network. And Rocky, as we know, runs on top of the Ethernet, and looseless, lossless Ethernet is typically configured with Ethernet flow control or priority flow control. Also, uh, lossless Ethernet could be configured with a data center bridging either Ethernet network, uh, but it requires specific network equipment and could be more complicated than InfiniBand network in terms of configuration. Uh, next difference is uh, congestion control. So InfiniBand and Rocky uses different headers in a frames for making frames the uh, for marking frames sorry and receiving acknowledgments and last one at the significant difference at InfiniBand switches have always had a much lower latency than Ethernet switches. So uh, with all the information about the RDMA and the protocols that support RDMA, we finally come to the point of configuring and testing the RDMA connection. So the great start would be uh, choosing the protocol you're planning on implementing. It's either uh, InfiniBand, Rocky, or iWarp. Um, the next step uh, would be the finding networking equipment, all the hardware, all the hardware equipment necessary for uh, configuring and testing RDMA, I mean, all the servers and everything. And last one, uh, it's to configure all of the software involved. So it's OS, all the necessary drivers and firmware for the hardware components. Um, okay, gentlemen, uh, I saw that you lost the audio. Uh, could you please confirm that right now you hear me well? Just to double check. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, back into the configuration and testing of RDMA. Uh, so, once everything, I mean the hardware and software part, you have all of the hardware necessary, you choose the protocol, uh, software configured. Uh, once ever it's done, then you need to have the benchmarking tool to perform all of the tests on the network and everything. So for this one, uh, it could be uh, quite complicated uh, since the different vendors offer different. Um, um, benchmarking tools that he includes in the sum of the packets. Uh, as far as I know, the most common is from IBM testing tool uh, with the Linux distributions. Uh, it comes as well with the uh, um, benchmarking tools integrated to the OS sometimes to um, test the uh, RDMA connection. And uh, basically, it's good when you're configuring the same OSs. I mean, uh, if it's the RDMA connection between the Windows and Windows, or between the Linux and Linux. But what if we're um, configuring the cross-platform connection? In this case, um, as far as of my research, I didn't find any tool in the internet that allows me to uh, benchmark the RDMA connection to get the, all the 
performance benchmark, the throughput, the latency, and everything. Uh, or it could be uh, very complicated to combine all of the um, results from the tests um, because some uh, some of the benchmarking tools um, just giving you the result uh, in form of in yeah in form of uh, just the latency or the throughput. So uh, it would be great if we have the benchmarking tool that could. Uh, give us everything, the throughput, the latency, and everything in the single tool, and uh, could be easily configured and managed. So um, in this way, we uh, actually have uh, one tool, nearly uh, was presented it by our company, by Starwind. It's uh, Starwind RPerf benchmarking tool. And I would tell you a bit more about it a few minutes later. First of all, let me um, just um, do a quick introduction to my testing lab, where I tested the RDMA connection. Uh, first of all, I have uh, the two hosts, two ESXi hosts uh, with the ESXi 6.7 installed in it. Um, I have two um, Mellanox Connectix for uh, NICs. 10 gigabit NICs uh, with the RDMA configured in it. It's Rocky version one. And as well, I developed, I deployed two virtual machines on each host. Uh, one, it's uh, Windows based with the Windows Server OS, Windows Server 16. Let me just quickly log into the consoles. Okay, so here is the one testing virtual machine, and second one, it's the Linux based with the CentOS 7 on it. Here it is. And uh, for the configuration, as I mentioned, I used the uh, Starwind RPerf benchmarking tool that allows uh, to test uh, the RDMA connection and uh, it shows all of uh, the necessary results. I mean, the throughput, latency, and with these results, you can um, analyze, do the analysis of the RDMA connection and do the ne necessary uh, reconfiguration or even changing the type of the RDMA connection if it doesn't fit your requirements. Okay, so uh, let's do the quick um, live time test to see how our tool works, how we can uh, test the RDMA connection uh, between the cross platform, between the two different platforms. And let me just quickly type necessary comments since uh, it's already uh, worked on the virtual machines. First, I uh, will do um, the Linux one as the server. Uh, while I'm writing the comments, if you have any questions, gentlemen, you can just type them in the questions box so I can, uh, meanwhile, answer all of your questions if you have them so far. Okay, actually, um, yep, here. So here, uh, Linux is the server. So to uh, do it as the server, we just type in a simple comment with the IP address of the RDMA network. Um, adapters for Rocky. So from uh, this is the question from Vasily Rudamanov. Actually, um, I don't have the full list of this one, but I could, could say about the concrete, concrete vendors. Um, it's uh, for the Mellanox, it's uh, starting from Connectix 3 Pro networks. They support Rocky and the newest version as well. Uh, for the Broadcom and uh, Keylogic, I believe. Um, Actually, right now, I don't have the full list of them, but 
you can easily find them on the uh, their website or as well on the website on or on the website of Infinity Band Trade Association. There are the lists of the network adapters that supports Rocky. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so question for Aaron Wilson, uh, what are you using for a switch between the uh, Kinetix 4 Nix? Actually, there is no switches, it's direct connection between the, uh, between the two nodes. So the switches uh, didn't use. So it's pretty simple configuration in terms of uh, hold setup. Uh, okay, so uh, the question from with uh, Vasily uh, Rudamano asked, I, it's we face that Intel cards have issues with RDMA enabled traffic. Um, which type uh, I see that Vasily is offline and Actually, with the Intel cards, um, probably it could be, possibly it could be with the RDMA enabled, uh, but it could be as well the driver's issue. So the implementation of RDMA uh, with the network cards requires the uh, latest drivers or, and all additional packets from the network manufacturer that needs to be uh, installed and implemented with the network cards to have the full performance and full availability of the RDMA. Okay, so let me just quickly back to the um, testing lab and start the performance tests. Okay, and the windows will be uh, in the desktop. Sorry for that. CD desktop. I'm just accessing uh, the folder with the RPerf tool. As well, our um, RPerf tool comes uh, with the Linux and with the Windows version as well to um, test the cross platform connection. And uh, you can as well use it to test the Windows based. RDMA connection and the Linux based. I mean the both servers with the same OS. Okay, and and RPerf and let's go minus A B address on the partner so gentlemen uh, the comment itself so we're uh, first of all I already run the tool on Linux VM and right now I'm starting to run the RPF tool on the Windows virtual machine. So what's common it's doing? So we're specifying the IP address of the partner side and we're performing in this tool the synthetic test. So it's not um, emulating the real workload. So the results could uh, on the real workload could be um, different from the synthetic test. So you should be aware of this. And the comment itself, it's uh, right now we'll do the 10,000 of the iterations of the read iterations uh, with the buffer size uh, 4096 and a queue depth of 16. So, as you can see, the time was spent is very less and the throughput it's the synthetic throughput of the synthetic test and um, converting the result of the throughput basically between these two virtual machines, it's possibly to get the performance on the level of approximately 5.5 gigabytes per second of transfer.
data transfer and the 1 million of IOPS. So the minimum latency was the 7 microseconds. The average is uh, 14. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, gentlemen. Right now, I think you should hear me. I probably something with my audio. Okay, so as I uh, mentioned, we performed the test uh, with the 10,000 iterations with the buffer size uh, 4096 and the Q16. It's the read operations. And we get the performance, uh, the throughput, uh, which uh, shows us that we approximately have the 5.5 gigabytes per second at the performance and the or 1 million of IOPS. It's the synthetic test, so it's approximate, it's possible results that you, you can get on the 10 gigabit network connection, uh, RDMA enabled between the two virtual machines. And the latency, as you can see as well, it's uh, very, it, <laughs> it's uh, just uh, seven microseconds. It's minimum, the average, it's almost 15 microseconds and the maximum it's 21 for these iterations for the operations and um, actually as I mentioned it's the synthetic test and it uh, tests only the connection itself so in the real workload uh, there will be uh, quite different results that you will get because uh, your um, on top of this, you are implementing other solutions, the software solution, uh, the different applications that could affect the performance. As well, if uh, we're talking about the direct connection, then yeah. So the problems could be just with the drivers on the network cards on each host, if we're talking about the connection. But if it's the complicated network connectivity stack, then it could be the switched layer uh, where the some misconfiguration on switching on the networks, uh, network adapters and everything else. So uh, everything could be affected by just one misconfiguration on the whole setup. So uh, to ensure that everything uh, runs uh, as you expected, as you want to run, uh, then you just need to separate uh, or just uh, divide the uh, possible um, factions that could be faced and first it's the you can test the RDMA connection itself then you can uh, test the performance of the storage as well as the underlying storage could affect the performance of the connection and could be the bottleneck and the software solution that could be used for example the software defined storage or something like this could as well affect so the whole uh, performance as to ensure that, that the whole performance of the whole solution is um, good, then um, you need to be sure that all of the components were configured in the proper way. Um, okay, gentlemen, so um, with the test lab, it's over. So uh, we came to the questions time, and if you can answer all of the questions that you have to me. And while you're writing the questions, I actually have a few questions that as well need to be answered. First of all, you need to use uh, the same uh, RDMA protocol on each network uh, adapters. The, all the adapters and the network protocols could, uh, should be the same on each host where the RDMA will be enabled. Um, as well as for the APIs configuration, since there is no uh, standard for it, for example, InfiniBand and Rocky, it's uh, the Rocky based on the InfiniBand architecture, and the APIs for programming the configuration of the network RDMA network could be the same. So it's pretty easy for configuring or switching. And as well for the implementation, for example, if it's um, the new implementation, okay. We have the question from Aaron. Uh, would this tool be good for uh, testing storage spaces the record DMA connection? Um, actually, uh, it, as I mentioned, it's testing the 
uh, RDMA connection itself. So you will get the performance on the networks, on the layer, on the network layer, the possible performance that you, you can get with the storage spaces directly. You're um, as well in implementing the SMB storage protocol, which is going to be over the RDMA protocols. And in this way, I believe to test the storage spaces direct, you can use the RPerf tool, but as well, you need to have the storage test to, to test the storage that provides by the storage spaces direct or the Microsoft SDG cluster. So, okay, the question from Adam, is there a compatibility between Rocky and InfiniBand implementations. Okay, so uh, for the implementations, uh, they couldn't be connected, so the adapter should be the same. Uh, so if you're implementing Rocky, then you need to have the adapters that supports Rocky on each server. If you're implementing InfiniBand, then you need adapters with the support of InfiniBand and the switches that support InfiniBand. So in this case, uh, in terms of uh, implementation, uh, the InfiniBand is more costly than the Rocky because uh, with the Rocky you can use, uh, you need to have just the uh, network cards on each server uh, to uh, enable Rocky, and uh, you can use uh, regular switches to connect them. Uh, with InfiniBand you need uh, both the adapters and the switches. And the uh, uh, Rocky adapter couldn't connect to the InfiniBand adapter. Okay, so we have another question from Aaron. Due to RDMA, the connection speed to should be close to the same for hardware layers as for VMs. Um, yes. So since uh, actually you can uh, provide, for example, the RDMA uh, adapter straight to the virtual machine. Uh, I did this with my virtual machines. Sorry if I didn't mention previously. So in my virtual machines, uh, the network adapters, uh, I added them uh, with the VMware feature uh, PCI path through to the virtual machines. And uh, with the RDMA, it's close to the hardware or even better because uh, with the technology it making it uh, with the bigger throughput and the better performance with the lower latency so it's working much faster than with the usual networking connections okay so uh, we have one more question from Aaron. Was any other configuration required when hooking up to RDMA NICs directly? Do you just use a direct connect cable? Um, yes, so I directly connected uh, port to port to hosts and provided the NICs to the virtual machines. And as well, inside the virtual machines, I installed all the necessary drivers for the uh, from the Mellanox website to enable uh, the Rocky support and RDMA on Windows and the Linux. Yeah, so for, yes, it's easy for the for the direct connections, but in terms of switching, it's become more uh, complicated because you need to configure switch and depending on the protocol, it uh, could become even more complex with the configuration. So yeah, that is why uh, RDMA was, um, basically used and uses right now uh, in the large clusters or where the slow low, low latency and the high throughput is required um okay so Aaron asked the question uh what we are using for the storage piece speed testing basically we have as well our uh, own tool to uh, test the um, storage performance, but you can use the um, disk SPD to test the storage or uh, other software to test it. The only thing that you need, you should be aware it's uh, um, the parameters that you tested that they are right and you get you get in the all the necessary information from the tests. Okay, so since we're end up all of the questions, um, I'm very thank you for um, joining this webinar and you'll be with me today. 
and as well uh, the, as I mentioned this uh, the video of, of the webinar the recorded video will be um, on our website and on our YouTube channel and uh, the other topic that related to the RDMA will be um, discovered and discussed on another webinar it's uh, the NVMe over fabrics it's as well related to the RDMA implementation because um, most of the vendors told that the NVMe, NVMe over fabrics it's the future of the implementing RDMA and storage solutions so you can check our website where will be uh, announced this webinar and join it and be and have the all the information about the NVMe over fabrics so once more thank you for joining the webinar and that you will be with me so have a good day everyone and goodbye